Across the Tampa Bay area. Now at this point, I am in excruciating pain. We hear stories. Something has to be done. If not, we're going to lose her and we're going to lose this baby. From black women of all backgrounds. I'm alive because I have family who knew better. Who say they almost died giving birth. And experts say it's a trend that is much bigger than just them. Oh no, I was done with children. I was, I was done with that aspect, that part of my life. For Sierra Tucker, chest pains and a trip to her local clinic in 2019 led to a major shock. She was 11 weeks pregnant with twins 21 years after having her first baby. I have grandchildren, so I definitely never in a million years thought that I would be having another child. And then five weeks later, another shock. I was told then that baby B did not make it. Baby A, which is JV on, consumed or absorbed. He ate his twin, in other words. Tucker tells us her pregnancy was pretty smooth after that, and she started working with a midwife and doulas to create a home birth plan. I just wanted the more personal one-on-one -on -one care that I would get. And that plan was on track until a checkup on March 19th, 2020, revealed issues with her blood pressure and meant she would have to give birth at a local hospital. I felt like at this point, all chaos broke out. But the start of the pandemic meant new rules for who could come with you to give birth. Tucker says she had to fight to make sure her husband and at least one of her doulas was allowed in with her. And she credits that fight with saving her and her baby's life after an induction and 27 hours of labor. I'm telling them, like, listen, you know, like, it's time. So she's like, no, I just te checked you, and you know, it's not time, whatever the case may be. Baby's head was halfway already coming on out, but by the time the doctor that came back in the room, he's pulling, he's like putting the gloves on. Say hi to the camera, say hi. No? Okay, cool. She now has a healthy three-year-old named Javion, but she wonders what would have happened if a doula hadn't been there to advocate for her. They made the experience better, safer, and they were our voice. This little handsome fella is called Milo. Born April 9th at 12.05 a.m. on Easter. As Sierra Watson cradles her third and final bundle of joy, she tells us that she did have some health complications to be mindful of. In 2018, I had high blood pressure. Um, and because of my age, they consider me to be high risk due to my age, as well as I had um, cardiomyopathy. But she adds that lifestyle changes and a birthing team helped her to manage them. Instead, she says what truly terrified her was the idea of repeating her 2018 birth experience, which came with complications. Just knowing what I experienced in 2018 from the, from the care that was provided for me, you know, while in labor. And she says above all else, she didn't feel heard. It's very terrifying. It's, it's very terrifying to tell provided what you're experiencing while labor. They're telling you, oh, it's normal, it's this, it's that. And oftentimes it's not normal. But she says for her second daughter's delivery in 2021 and Milo's delivery, her birth team made all the difference. I don't think it would have been possible without a doula. To learn more about these parallel experiences, we went to speak with a doula who cared for both of these black mothers. We see this all the time. Courtney West says these women's stories mirror her own from almost a decade ago. I almost died. And I was a medical professional, same thing. Nurse walked out, they weren't listening. I was a clamp sick, I started having a seizure. Doctor was furious, because here's my ex-husband and my mother holding my baby because they left us. And I was like, no one should go through this and she became a doula because of it. A doula is a person who is an advocate for the family. West says lack of access to quality health care, poor quality of life, and medical racism all play a role in the specific and traumatic outcomes that many black women and other women of color experience while giving birth. In medical jargon and how medical studies are done, they say that black women automatically have higher blood pressures. We can take lots and lots of pain with less anesthetic, and that to not listen to us because we're naturally loud. So as a black doula, it's very imperative that you can say, stop, 
No, 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 no. You've not even looked at her. Stop looking at the chart. Look at her. This is Sierra. This is not Black Mother number 125. This is Sierra. And the latest data shows the problem is getting worse. It is alarming. It unfortunately is not new for us. We've been doing this a while. Dr. Ronne Wilson has been working in public health for decades, and she says nationwide, the number of women who are dying during pregnancy or shortly after is on the rise. According to national data, in 2019, that number was 754. In 2020, it was 861. And in 2021, it was 1205. And she says when we're specifically talking about black moms, it's happening at a rate much higher than white moms. And so we do see in the nation, in the state, and in our local communities that black moms are three to four times more likely to die from pregnancy-related causes. And when it comes to black mothers nearly dying during pregnancy or shortly after, the numbers are no better. According to the Hillsborough County Department of Health, in 2021, for every 1,000 hospital deliveries in the county, 46 black mothers nearly died, while white mothers had 26 near-death experiences. In Pinellas County, those same rates were 53 black mothers as compared to 27 white mothers having a similar experience. Wilson says the age and health of the mother going into pregnancy and birth are factors that can lead to these outcomes, but that's not all. We also have to um, be very honest about the fact that some of the factors are systems related. Some of the factors are related to inadequate care. To better understand why black women are having such different outcomes and what can be done, a local task force has been created. So the Black Infant and Maternal Mortality Task Force began about two years ago, and it's a partnership between the Healthy Start Coalition and Reach Up Incorporated. Cherie Wright-Jones is on that task force with Dr. Wilson and many others in the community. She says over the past two years, they've been gathering data and talking to women to hear their stories firsthand. And for her, the biggest takeaway has been what we've heard in our own interviews, that black women feel unheard. I would say the most key and imperative thing is listening to women and listening to women first. And Wright Jones adds that after listening, they found a pattern of systemic issues that reach far beyond the healthcare system. We are looking to engage everyone in this process because this is just not an issue for healthcare providers. It is an issue that impacts everything, not just our system of care, but economic, um, it, effect, it is impacted by housing, the living conditions that our women um, and their infants you know, live in and our families live in. Um, we have to address education as well as family supports. Both Wright Jones and Wilson say to bring those numbers down, the task force will be holding community conversations about the issue, creating programs to help get women healthy before and during pregnancy, and continuing to collect data. Oh, wow. And it's a long-term challenge that they say they're up for tackling. Ooh, let me get myself together. Because for them. Because it's a passion project for me. This fight is personal. Being a black educated woman who is married, who had access to private insurance and the best of care, I almost had a poor birth outcome. And so it's critical for me that I speak out about this issue and that I try to ensure that the next generation is healthy. These numbers represent lives lost. They represent families impacted. They represent shifts in our communities, holes that you know, will never be the same. Reporting with photojournalist Josh Whitston, I'm in-depth reporter Rochelle Aline.